Welcome to Popcorn History with the Freeborn County Historical Museum. I'm Stephanie Kibler, Executive Director at the Museum, and I'm here with Risha Lilienthal, Collections and Exhibits Manager at the Museum, and Reggie Bauer, Operations Manager and Music Director with Power 96. And today, we are going to take you through... Hmm. Well, starting with archaeology. Yeah, I was trying to come up with a yeah. good, I don't know, convoluted wasn't the right word, but <laughs> archaeology, nurseries, <laughs> yep. rock gardens, yeah. fires. Definitely fire. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I didn't really know this. I knew this, I suppose, back in grade school. You know, you get your <laughs> archaeology 101 when you're five right. years old and it's really cool. And then you get to high school and either you love it or you don't. <laughs> yeah. College, probably the same thing, love it or you don't. Right. Uh, but glaciers once covered mm-hmm. the Midwest, mm-hmm. including mm-hmm. Freeborn County. And I'm going to guess most of us Freeborn Countyans don't know that. I mean, I, uh, just. It's probably not something that just comes to mind. Right. Well, and you, when you're taught, it's like the glaciers receded at this one point, and mm-hmm. then you don't think about it at all. But it was the Des Moines Lobe was the one that covered Freeborn County, and that right. actually stretched out further while other ones were receding backwards. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and so the huge, slow-moving ice fields um, brought from the north portions of the mountain um, rocks and mm-hmm. boulders and whatnot that got ground down as they moved. Um, and these were then deposited under what is now known, according to the Albert Lee Tribune, May 1955, as the best farmland in the world. Oh, nice. Mm. Um, and again, I think that goes back to the kettle, the... Yeah, the um, kettle rock, yep. The, it, which created uh, that rich, dense, mm-hmm. kind of peaty soil. Mm-hmm. Um, but each spring, these boulders pop up as oh. as winter ter- or ends and spring comes. The boulders then work their way to the surface, and farmers haul them from the fields. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because if you're driving, you know, sometimes I've been asked by kids, why is there a pile of rocks in that field? Oh, sure. Well, this is why. And if you yeah. drive through the countryside, you'll see almost every farm has, has the pile rocks. of rocks, yep. which are actually from the glaciers. Yeah. That's interesting. They brought all that sediment and rocks and stuff right. with them. Yeah. And created the richest farmland yeah. that we have in the world, according to the Albert Lee Tribune, yeah. May 1955. Wow. Right. <laughs> we Yeah, we had a couple of rock, well, we still have at least one rock pile back. No, I think we have two big rock piles back home on the farm. I mean, and that's about an hour north of here, so I don't know how, how much of the claim to best soil in the world that has that far away from here but yeah one of the things i can remember hearing years ago too um the community of new richland Mm -hmm. was actually named because it was the new rich rich land land. nice now that's something i heard i guess i should have done a little more research on that i don't know if that's actually factual or not but actual it's kind of a fun folklore thing if it's not yeah no that's neat yeah so Rich, rich farmland, but yeah. also rich for growing all kinds, all of, kinds other of stuff. Things. Like the wedge nursery that was here, that was a big, um, I guess, group. Uh, the, the started with Clarence Wedge, who uh, worked in general farming on a two hundred acre tract that was just southeast of Albert Lee on the south shore of the lake, and he named it Echo Farm. I don't really know why. I would love to know why. That sounds kind of neat. Uh, he was just 20 years old, and it was 1876. Uh, and then by 1878, he had a small nursery of evergreens and uh, this word, I, this interesting, deciduous trees. Ooh. Oh, what does that mean? I, I don't know. know what that means, deciduous. Des- I that- feel like it, does that have to do with... Deciduous. Uh, in the fields of horticulture and botany, the term deciduous means falling off at maturity or tending oh. to fall off in reference oh, to trees and shrubs so that seasonally shed leaves. Sure. Usually in the okay, so it's the evergreens that stay mm-hmm. all year round and then the ones that have fa- trees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, trees. The other yep. are deciduous. <laughs> That's, it's a delicious word, deciduous. Um, but because it sounds diabolical. It does. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Because of that success, uh, he decided to start a full commercial nursery business. 
and his son Robert Wedge then joined him after graduating from the Minnesota School of Agriculture in 1904. And that grew during his time um, to over 60 agents selling door-to-door in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and the Dakotas. I had no clue. 60? Wow. Yeah. 80. 80? 80 agents. Yeah. Yeah. And um, orders were shipped uh, during spring, usually, in 10-foot wooden boxes. And just this whole family, they all kind of had something that they did that expanded this business and made it even more, um, I guess, noteworthy. Uh, so Clarence himself, the, the one who started it all, he's credited for being the first to express in 1888 that great belts should be planted on the prairie districts, forming a network of barriers to our storms. So like that, those trees that sure. you see randomly in fields, you know? Yep. Yeah, he was... Well, that was his idea. Yeah. Interesting. And, yeah. Nice. Uh, he also grew one of the first commercial apple... Well, it said the first in this article that I read. Uh, was the first commercial apple orchard in a 30-acre area of Echo Farm. And his son, Robert Wedge, is credited with being the inventor of the power shaker concept for shrub and tree diggers and the box baler. Which I I am not a farmer, so I don't really know what well, exactly. Well, power that shaker is. must shake. Uh, well, yeah. shake something. <laughs> shake the ground. Shake the. I actually am not Poor really familiar with either of those. Oh yeah, maybe that's how they got almost like a into jack ground. hammer kind of thing. Box baler too. I don't know. I mean, when I think box baler, I think is like those, you know, those square ones that you see. But that wouldn't be the oh, same. For oh, bailing? that is a machine. Uh, <laughs> Hmm. Reggie has the advantage of a computer right, right in front of, him. of being able to Google it. it yeah. Is, is it not related to hay? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't think it is related well, to hay. Yeah. I think it's related to the nursery. Yeah, and like trees maybe processing the wood. I don't know. More to come on that, folks. Right. Yeah, I'm still not quite <laughs> sure. It looks like it. What it's showing here is is under like a cardboard baler, and it shows it like just crunches everything down into like a cube, and then you've got it. So sure, maybe they did that with hay back then. I don't know. I, Google's not helping. But me. But I don't think they had. <laughs> hay I don't think on it was hay. No. no, it was shrubs we'll and trees. To, we'll and, dig into that. Yeah. Um, Moving on, I guess. Um, (laughs) Around 1922, Wedge Nursery paid for the first electric power line constructed out in that area by Southern Minnesota Gas and Electric Company. Uh, So we were talking about electricity last time. So they were one of the first people and who that paid was in for it. What year? That was in nineteen twenty two. Okay, I, that's kind so, of yeah. about yeah. where I was at, so yeah. I'm not too far off. Yeah. Uh, and Robert again, um, his son, Don, came into the business in nineteen thirty three, so like in the thick of the depression. Uh, and he developed the landscape department and completed over ten thousand landscape designs in the area. Wow. Yeah. And that's Is there even that many in right the now? county? Like, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and the nursery then became one of the first firms to propagate woody plants by softwood cuttings under inter- intermittent mist. Which, again, there's some like... I even know what that is. You know what that is? Okay, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what these things are, but they sound cool. Like, Especially they're the first ones to do it. What is this intermittent misting stuff? Right. Well, misting, so it keeps it watery. Yeah, you keep it... Finger it's... waggled at me. <laughs> 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 you darn kids. I'll finger wet. <laughs> <you. laughs> no. <laughs> I was fascinated by the way plants are propagated. So oh. I had, as in, in high school, so that was something that I, I probably did a paper on or something. I don't know. That's how that it just clicks in my head. What does it do? It just sprinkles it keeps it, the... It keeps it moist. So you don't want it over wet, but you want to have that oh. that moisture. Is it like at the grocery store where the, oh, the plants spritz. like get little showers? I believe so, yes. Oh, okay. So this was one of the or first... Or in Palm Springs when you're on a patio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but this nursery was one of the first 
firms to do that. Oh, interesting. Um, Dorothy Wedge, then Robert's daughter, so Don's sister, Robert's daughter, joined in 1942 and managed the Garden Center and it turned it into the largest and most complete garden center in southern Minnesota and northern Iowa. So that was in 42. Well, I know people who came from the Twin Cities to come down to oh, Wedge Nursery. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. It's known for being the largest producer of some 200 lilac varieties. Wow. I say lilac. I know some people say lilac. lilac. Um, and it gained national and international reputation for its specialty in the propagation and production of lilacs. Hmm. So, I, you know, people come from the Twin Cities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They got well known for that. Um, oh, and I guess I should mention that they didn't always stay in that southeast part of Albert Lee. Um, at the turn of the century, so around 1900, they actually moved north of Albert Lee to Itasca Village. So most of this was in Itasca Village, where they had the lighter soils and level land were more adapted to that nursery purposes. I love driving out there on Itasca Road, um, even today, because some of the shrubs that they had um, planted in the nursery are still there. But they are, you know, like 40 foot 50 foot 60 foot i don't know arbor bitey <laughs> that sure. like there's like this castle like wall of arbor oh, out there wow. i just think it's so cool yeah wedge nursery it's a family affair it is and they all did something and something new each time so um am i cutting in here oh no go did it. you know that robert wedge built the house on the property known as the itasca rock garden oh like right when they well, they had moved out to Itasca, yeah. So they built that property, uh, that house. Also, did the original house. Did you know that we at the museum have got the outhouse that was used at Wedge Nursery? What? Interesting. What? Yep. The outhouse was at Wedge Nursery? It was used at Wedge, <gasps> Wedge Nursery. It actually is the outhouse, I believe, from the Itasca School, yeah. which sits on the corner Oh, my gosh, there. that's where that was. And <laughs> <laughs> my mind has been blown. R- okay. Risha's mind just blew. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the outhouse that was used at the Wedge Nursery is actually sitting behind our schoolhouse oh in the village. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But, yeah, so Robert Wedge built that home. Um, not the original home, though, I don't believe. That was built by Christ- John oh. John Christensen. Yeah, although Wedge must have built it before him. That could be. Yeah. So he built both of the homes that had sat on that property. Mm, no. No, just he built one Whew. there. This is my day, folks. <laughs> it's been like this all day long. So the Christensen, John Christensen and his wife then moved on to that property. Mm-hmm. Um and um, they had been farmers. He was a uh, Im- he immigrated from Denmark when he was nine years old with mm-hmm. his, his parents and his family. And um, they farmed. Oh God, I'm not remembering where was their farm out. Oh goodness! Shoot, wasn't it? It was around Albert Lee, wasn't it? It was right outside of Albert Lee. Yes, but on that farm, he accrued a big pile of stones and boulders mm-hmm. through the years from this. That popping up in the field and, yeah. um, and this this pile was the growing point which blossomed into what is now known as the Atasca Rock Garden so that uh, the original rocks for the rock garden came from the Christensen farm um, initial plan was for him to build a good vegetable cellar oh. <laughs> uh, needed cool dark damp earthen banked room for storing potatoes oh yeah, um, yeah. onions yeah. you know you're produce or canned goods i'm gonna guess um and he started digging that cellar as soon as they um, purchased the property um but he and his wife noticed the beauty of the rocks as they were placing them and Mm. uh got became visionaries (laughs) and um started putting together the rock garden um, the rocks on that site are from farms throughout Freeborn County, as well as many of, and this is from the newspaper, many of the 48 states. Oh, yeah. Well, they kept taking them from national parks, didn't they? I I think we, they took them from around. 
Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was, it was still before there, we had 50 states. It was oh. only the 48 states. Oh, yeah. Yep. I didn't yeah. even catch that. Yeah. Yeah, the 50, yeah those, those finals, it would have been in 1959, I believe, was when Alaska uh-huh. and Hawaii both joined mm-hmm. in. Yeah. So from 1912 until mm-hmm. 1959 is when we had 48 oh, states. Oh, my goodness. Our 48th state was Arizona, if I'm not mistaken. Very good, right? <laughs> yeah, he's just pulling I feel in like, here. I don't wow. know, we should get a balloon or something. Right. <laughs> Um, a sticker. The Albert Lee Tribune stated, a Danish farmer who came to America when but a lad of nine, but had not lost the mental image of the castles on the hills of Denmark. So that was what he was um, creating, the Itasca Rock that Garden, was some so memories. Like Isn't that sweet? Mystical and like... I know, I just kind of yeah. It yeah. reminds me of that Ed Sheeran song. Um, I was gonna put that in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't think of the name Over of that. Over the castle, yeah. On the hill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I oh. love Ed Sheeran. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought of when I read that. I thought it was really funny. Um, and I don't know, maybe everyone knows or doesn't know, but um, starting this June or early July, mm-hmm. the Rock Garden Restoration will start. Um, so the Kohler Foundation, um, who is committed to preservation of art environments and, and collections is putting almost a half a million dollars into this project. Yeah. Um, the house has been re- re- uh, renovated and restored to um, kind of back to the 1938 structure that was okay. built. Um, but another about 400000 will go into actual restoration of the rock garden itself. Mm. So, And then after that, they are going to gift that to... The Freeborn County yeah. Historical Museum, oh, yeah. Library awesome. Village, and Rock and, Garden. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That's um, uh, interesting that you said the 1938 home, because the one that Robert Wedge built burnt down in 1934. Uh, so it, they the fire started on the roof, and they uh, lost a lot of their keepsakes, which they had stored in the attic, and much of the items that they lost were ones that Mr. Christensen had brought with him from Denmark. Oh, so he lost no. a lot of his um, home. His heritage. Yeah, and one item that he specifically listed was a squirrel coat. Interesting. Um, squirrel fur interesting. coat. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm kind of thinking about how, yeah, you know, they, they wouldn't have made synthetic fur at the time, so it's if you wanted a fur coat, it had to be actual fur. <laughs> I'm like, oh, poor squirrels. I'm envisioning, you know, the smooth squirrels, <laughs> the tail, fur, the or? arm, and then and then like a series of tails oh, on the yeah. shoulders. So you had like the <laughs> general. Oh, st- that's like Cruella de Vil. Or Cruella de Vil, <laughs> yeah. yes. That's what I'm picturing. Oh, no. A squirrel coat. Well, and then I also thought about Hunger Games and like how they had to get all the squirrels and Katniss would, was very good at shooting squirrels. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's what that one's out of my league. Sorry. Oh, Hunger Aww. Games. Yeah, it's out of my, I know what Hunger Games <laughs> is, but it's it's not something I have oh. partaken in. Sure. sure. Well, they also lost some of their goldfish that they were going to put in that like basement area that they had. They um, kept those in the attic. No, it spread. The, the fire spread. <laughs> didn't keep the goldfish. The fire didn't just stay contained attic. in the attic. <laughs> so we're just they- burned the top <laughs> attic part. <laughs> just a little <laughs> off the top. <laughs> <laughs> were the goldfish down in the basement then, in mm-hmm. the ponds that he had made? Not quite yet in okay. the ponds because he was still kind of fixing that up. Yeah. So just for those of you, this is when you do get to come and visit the rock garden. Um, Mr. Christensen not only created a rock garden on the exterior Mm -hmm. of the home, um, but in the basement, there is this elaborate room that has ponds and bridges and plant holders. And it's just, it's really amazing. And there's even like a little Mm -hmm. seat that you can see in there. What was it, like the Fairy King's throne or something? Uh, Something like that. I love it so much. It's really a neat that's my favorite piece of the whole it's, property. Is well, that it's room. like a whole fairy tale there. Yes. It's beautiful. It is. Um, but the the fire, too, I have a quote that he said to the paper in 1934. He said, if it hadn't been for the fine help given us by the Albert Lee Fire Department and our neighbors and friends, our loss would have been much greater. We are very thankful that the fire didn't take place some cold time during the night. Mm-hmm. 
One of the losses we cannot replace is the damage to the fine trees and vines that were about our home. I'm afraid the wonderful burr oak tree that hung over the house on the east side is too badly damaged to survive. It would take more than a hundred years to duplicate this tree. Wow. Yeah. And that is, I, I, I can, so when we first started looking at this property, there were several of the oaks out there mm-hmm. that were um, so diseased we couldn't oh, save them in one that yeah. had died. And I'm sure it was 150-year-old trees that, mm. that yeah. were. And they are fantastic. There's still a lot of them left. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I feel yeah. that. Yeah. I am. Um, while you were talking, I kind of popcorned. Oh, Yeah. I was wondering, um, do you suppose the Wilson fire truck responded to that fire? <laughs> oh. Well, if it, it was in the 30s. It was two. Yeah, then the, I thought the Wilson truck was in like the 50s. Yeah. 1932. Was, wasn't it 56? 19, oh, it was 32. 32 Ford. Oh, it is, but they didn't have it then. Oh. They didn't yeah, get they it didn't in the year they... Until okay. either 51 yeah. or 56, right. if I remember Right, yep. that's what it them. I can't remember. Um, there were two... To, um, the... Um, Rochester Fire Department. Oh, had that's it at right. One point. That's right. Yeah, I think that's where it came from. Was Rochester? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe a bit of a drive. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he actually had to go to his neighbors because he didn't have a telephone. Oh. So they had to then call the fire department. Who was the closest neighbor at that time? Oh, I wonder. Um, where did he go? It was Andy Hansen. Hmm. Yep. Wonder, but he wonder in- which farm that was. <laughs> right. <laughs> Somewhere around there. <laughs> but he intended to build a bungalow on the same spot as soon as possible, which was probably the then 1938 house yes. that he built. And what's great about that house is um, it still had the original cabinet work, the oh, wood work. All yeah. of that is original to the oh, home still. And, yeah, they were saying when the fire happened, they were pulling out as much as they could of, like, original grates and stuff of huh. the original oh. Richard um, Wedge house that that had been built so even some of that is still in there probably okay yeah yeah very it's a really cool property it mm-hmm. really is I, and it does sit next to what was once the itasca schoolhouse mm-hmm. which is now a private home yeah. yeah and it's just down the road from three oaks winery which yeah. is actually on the wedge Ooh. nursery property oh i didn't know that yeah. that's cool yeah he's actually doing um some work and in, in looking for a little history too on oh, wedge nice. and the rock garden so yeah Huh. Anyway, that was kind of fun. Yeah. Have some popcorn. I was going to pass that bowl to you, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it this time, then. Awesome. <laughs>